Hi guys, this is um, a video on how to do our Greta bag. We have a downloadable PDF of the pattern um, along with all the step-by-step -step directions um, that you can purchase on our website. Um, but today we're actually gonna assemble the bag and show you kind of step-by-step -step, um, in person. We know everyone is probably a visual learner like us, so we wanted to uh, give you that. So at this point, and your bag in the process, you wanna have all your pieces cut out. Right. Uh, we're gonna move probably directly onto burnishing. So if you haven't cut your pieces out already, you should do that. And um, you can also punch out your oblong hole on the front flap. Yep. And so this is basically gonna be step one, um, right? Yeah, step mm -hmm. one, um, which is some prep work. <laughs> Hopefully you've cut your bag out and we're going to be burnishing the parts of the bag that will be difficult to burnish um, once the bag's already assembled. So that will include this edge, this edge, which is the top of this panel, your circle, this piece, these two pieces, and the one side of your gusset. So basically you're just going to wet the edge a little bit and if you have a hand burnisher, we're gonna burnish like this until it's nice and smooth. Or if you have a motorized version, you can use that. So there are two differences um, in what I'm doing versus what you've downloaded in the pattern. Um, I have a smaller circle which uh, uses a different magnet, but I'll show you how to do the one in the pattern that you downloaded. And I have twice as many pieces because I'm doing two Gretas at the same time. So step two is preparing the gusset. You'll want to mark three eighths of an inch from each corner, and then you're going to score on those lines like this. And you're going to want to press down pretty firm um, you want to make an indentation in the leather so it's easier to fold. So you'll do that on the other side as well. And then you're going to take your gusset and you want to fold this part towards you on the line. And you're going to do that along the whole thing. And it makes it a little bit easier if you fold it and then bend the whole way. It looks a lot easier than it is and you're going to build up a lot of finger strength. And I find that it's easiest to start right in the middle and then go to each edge. So because the instructions are having us rivet these on, you're going to want to, if you want to paint your tabs for the strap, now's the time to do that. Um, we use Chicago screws at the end, so I'm, I'm just going to demonstrate how this works. You're going to add your square loop to your strap here, your strap piece, and then you're going to find the holes on your gusset and line them up, put rivets in there. And then you'll rivet that and you'll do the same thing with the bottom hole. So right after you burnish, you can paint the edges on all the places that you've burnished if that's what you want to do. Um, you can also leave them just burnished. Uh, it's totally up to the person making the bag. For some bonus footage, this is how we put our stamp on our bags. Whoa. So 
So now you'll just wanna cut the slits where you marked when you cut your pattern out for the magnet. If you have a different magnet, you'll just wanna follow the instructions for those, but these look like this. They have a little backer piece like that. It's also a thicker side. So the thin side goes on the top panel, and then the thicker side goes on the body panel. So put those through, put the backer piece on. So the way we attach our magnets is a little bit different. Um, we have ours rivet on. So what you'll do is the same uh, method that you used on the other panel. You'll use the thicker magnet on this, on this panel. And then after that, you'll put the circle backer piece on top um, using barge or rubber cement. At this point, you can attach this semicircle piece to your back piece. So flush side down, flush side up, and we use we use Fabri-Tac to attach it because we're going to sew through it anyway. You can use whatever your favorite glue is. One of the things we like about using Fabri-Tac is that when you're gluing panels together, you have a little bit more wiggle room um, when you're when you're placing them. Uh, if you use a rubber cement, then as soon as you stick it down, it's, it's pretty stuck. So this gives you a little bit more flexibility, um, especially for places where you're just going to sew over. Now we're going to attach our gusset to our front panel. This should be step five. So you want to grab some binder clips, um, your gusset obviously, and then your front panel. You're going to start where your holes are on one side, and then you can immediately start gluing. So at this point, you're about three quarters of the way clipped up and glued. Um, you'll want to then mark. This part is not glued yet. So you'll want to then mark where it comes up to, and that'll be the end of your gusset. And then once you cut that straight across, you can then use your pattern piece to, to punch the holes in the other side. That way your gusset will fit every time because this is a little bit longer and then you cut it to fit. And you can unclip these a little bit. The trick is to lay it kind of on the edge with your pattern piece. Line everything up. Mark your holes and punch them. This is now a good time to paint this edge that you just cut on the gusset if you want to uh, if you want to paint it. Now it's time to sew. So, <laughs> always run a test strip through your machine before you sell your project. Pro tip. So we do a little hand stitch at the beginning and end to tie off um, the thread. So we give ourselves enough thread um, at the beginning and the end of our project. 
project. sew them, uh, we'll hand sew them through. If not, you can just clip those off and, and burn them with a thread zapper or we use a lighter. At the end of um, the top panel here, I always just hand kind of like whip stitch around the very top just to kind of finish it off. It makes it look a little bit nicer um, and just adds a little bit of strength to that piece. So now we're going to be doing some of the punching and hand stitching that goes around the oblong hole on the back piece. Um, you don't have to do it right now. I actually typically do it later in the process, but I do think this is probably the easiest time to get that done. A little quick tip. One thing you can do um, is use this wing divider to mark off the top and bottom of the oblong shape in order to get your stitches um, perfectly spaced around your oblong hole. Now I'm going to start marking off the holes to hand punch. Um, I always start by making marks with this and not actually punching through just to make sure that I'm spacing everything out correctly. Going around either side of the oblong hole can be a little bit tricky and I always use um, a two prong um, freaking iron. Freaking iron. <laughs> <laughs> freaking iron. Um, <laughs> lost my thought there. Um, to go around both of those sides um, and you kind of have to I kind of come in from the top and the bottom and try to space it out evenly it's not perfect you kind of just have to like wiggle around another re another reason why I always kind of make the indentations before I go ahead and actually punch through so next we're going to punch the two holes that go on top to attach the ring on the front this is actually our original pattern piece it's not the one that you guys are printing out so I'm used to using it, <laughs> it's fine. Basically, you're gonna line up the oblong hole um, with your pattern, and then you'll be able to line up the top holes just like that. Now I'm gonna punch the holes and the freaking iron holes as well. Okay, so I'm actually going to hold off on stitching these until the bag is fully sewn together. I'm just most comfortable doing it that way, but you absolutely could go ahead and hand stitch at this point if you wanted to. So next what I'm going to be doing is actually flipping this piece over and putting some marks on here to indicate where the front um, gusset, the gusset and the front panel are going to get attached so we can line that up correctly.
the next we're going to actually be doing a dry fit and what that means is i'm going to be clipping the front panel and gusset to the back panel without using any glue because you kind of have to line everything up because leather is also a bit stretchy it can be a little tricky so i'm going to use two different size clips our big uh, wire binder clips and these little binder clips as well um, to go around the curve. I just find these to be a little bit easier. Without any glue, I'm going to line up my the top of my gusset to the mark that I made earlier and start clipping around. There's a chance when I get to the other side that things won't be lined up and that's when I'll take all my clips off and adjust a little bit. Okay, so my gusset actually lined up perfectly on the first try, but if it hadn't lined up, what I would have done is kind of taken a look at how much of a gap I had, whether it was going over or under, and then taken half of that distance, taken all my clips off and adjusted accordingly on the other side, and then reclipped until I got it right. So next, I'm gonna be talking about the actual gluing up process and how to keep everything in its place while you glue it. What I'm gonna do in order to not uh, kind of like lose my place with everything and keep everything in place is I'm gonna take half of my clips off glue that part and clip it in place and then take the other half off, glue that part and clip it in place. So that way we don't lose anything that we just worked for. Uh, one quick tip, you always wanna make sure you don't miss a spot with the glue. So I always make sure that I take off the half of clips um, that I need on this side plus one more to make sure that it's glued and secured and I haven't missed a spot. And so now I'm gonna go up, go ahead and glue up the other side. One quick tip about going around kind of a tighter turn like this, when you go to sew around it, you're gonna wanna angle the bag up. It's gonna create a bigger gap between the bag itself and the actual cylinder arm of the machine, and it'll be easier to get around that tight curve. Another tip, um, so when you're going from two layers, like the body, to one layer and then back to two layers, you're gonna, if you're doing one long stitch on a machine, you're gonna need to adjust your tension for when you switch from two layers to one layer and back to two. So you'll see me do that. Okay, so next we're going to be um, sanding our edges um, with our sanding wheel um, and this is something you can absolutely do by hand but I personally found this to be one of the most painful <laughs> parts of the process so we did buy this machine pretty much uh, as soon as we could because it just makes the process a lot faster. So I'm going to be putting a mask on um, just to make sure I'm not getting any dust in my eyes or anything like that and um, and we'll stand away.
So now that we've sanded our edges, the next step is beveling. Um, when you sand the edges flat, you end up with a lip that runs all the way around your edge. And so the idea is to cut that off with a hand beveler. Um, the one that we use and love is Palo Santo. Um, it's the One Plus. Um, this thing just cuts like butter. Okay, so next we're gonna burnish our edges. Burn, burnish. <laughs> burnish. <laughs> we're gonna burnish our edges. Um, one thing to consider is how you want to finish your edges. Um, so we always paint our edges, so I always burnish with just water. Um, but if you're planning to just burnish and not paint, then we highly recommend using tokenol. Um, this stuff works great and you can end up with some really beautiful edges this way. Next we're going to do the hand stitching that goes around the oblong hole. Um, you could sew it with a sewing machine. I always prefer to hand stitch it just because it's such a tight um, area and I just always want it to look really good since it's kind of front and center on the bag. Um, so let's go ahead and do that saddle stitch. So typically when you're hand stitching you're probably going to be using a wax thread but because we um, sew all of our bags with bonded nylon I always do this stitch um, with bonded nylon as well. And one little trick I have for keeping the thread on the um, leather needles is to just burn a little ball at the end um, and that'll kind of keep your thread from falling off as you pull through. I always like to start um, right underneath the two holes for the rivets. Pull through and make sure your threads are even. So saddle stitching is all about the kind of the rhythm of your stitch and making sure to do it the same every single time. Um, there are some really great YouTube tutorials on how to get that perfect stitch. So I highly suggest looking up um, saddle stitching uh, before you go ahead and do this part. Um, we always add this fringe onto our ring. You totally don't have to do that, but um, you want to do it at this point if you're going to. Um, you can either leave it blank or add whatever you want. Okay, now it's time to rivet our ring in place. So you're going to put the little tab around the top of the ring and open your bag up. And you're going to feed it through the top and then line your holes up. So um, we're going to rivet the first one on. So you can absolutely buy and use a hand riveter set if you want, um, but we have this press um, that we've actually rigged up with a, a foot pedal to make it even easier for me. I'm really short, so it's hard for me to get the leverage. Um, so yeah. And this is a double capped rivet. And there you have it. Now I'm just going to trim this off.
at this point we are going to edge paint um, the edges of our bag and we typically like to pick a paint that matches our leather but you can do a contrasting color if you prefer um, we like to use uh, vernis um, edge paint and as well as uniters um, so those are the two, two uh, brands that we typically use we like to use these paint pens um, for the edge there's lots of different ways you can apply the paint though um, what's really great about these is they have some really great ball bearings in there and they spin really really easily there's also a spatula side if you need to get into a little crevice or something like that i use this very rarely but there's all different types so definitely take a look at what you want to use going to um, attach the square loops um, you guys actually have already done that at this point you've riveted them on but we use Chicago screws to put ours on so if you're using Chicago screws now is the time to do that okay as a reminder at this point your strap should be cut um, beveled burnished and painted if you want to paint the edges um, but we're gonna punch the holes now after skiving the ends we're going to be assembling this strap. I know that in the directions this is probably the most confusing part. It was very difficult for me to write it out um, with words so I'm hoping that this part of the video will help you if you're trying to do a sliding adjustable strap which is what we usually do. Um, you're also totally welcome to do a regular buckle strap or a button stud strap um, or just a plain solid strap that doesn't adjust at all. But you're gonna start with the straps laid out just like this and then take one end and fold it in half to line up your rivet holes. Take that bent piece and lay it on top of the flesh side of the other strap. So you got flesh side on top of flesh side just like this. Next, you're going to take your tab and slide it through that bent part that you made and take the entire thing and flip it over to the back side. This part is very important. Um, basically what we're gonna be doing is sizing the loop to fit very snugly. The leather will eventually um, stretch a little bit with wear and soften. So this has to be tight in order for the strap to hold um, the size that you choose. So the mark I just made with the bone folder is a little bit probably bigger than I actually need my loop to be, but I'm gonna cut it there and try it on and see if it's the right size. It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna um, trim that down. That fits perfect. So we set that tab, tab aside, and now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So now this piece that's lined up on the bottom, folding that over. And now we're gonna fit this tab onto the front. So the reason why I size each tab on their own is because leather is a natural product and sometimes it can be just a, a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker in different areas. Also, we've skived the ends of our straps and maybe we skived one just a little bit thinner than the other, that sort of thing. So you always want to size each tab to the strap that you're working with.
good. So when you're sizing them, you want them to fit on that strap um, just flat up against each other like this to make sure that you've got the right size. And now I'm gonna punch two holes on either end of my tabs, and that is to create um, a place to stitch our big X on the back. Now we're gonna sew the loops together. Um, I prefer to do an X on mine, but you could do a square, you could do two stitches, you could even staple them if you have that. Um, but yeah, just closing the loop. Take your first loop, you're gonna slide it face, face down, so the X is right here, and it's gonna be on the inside between the strap. And then we're gonna rivet it just like that. You're going to take the strap that has the riveted loop on it, turn that on its back, take the other strap, and you're going to slide the one end through. So now you've got them in there, and you've got this one end that still needs its loop. So we're going to take this loop, whoops, <laughs> you're going to put it on there, and now we're going to rivet it so that's going to be facing up. So the X is on the inside here. Now you're going to take your loose end and slide it through the remaining loop. On the end, it should look something like this. You can see it can slide to adjust to pretty short to pretty pretty long um, and fit lots of different um, sizes. You attach your strap to your bag and you're all done. Thanks for watching and um, purchasing a pattern. If you haven't purchased a pattern quite yet, I'll leave a link down below if you want to purchase a pattern. So we hope to do more of these in the future, so please let us know what patterns you'd like to see. Ship it out. It's done. Ship it.